Hey there everyone, welcome to our tutorial video. Today we are diving into the world of iOS app development. We will be walking you through the process of implementing Face ID in your application. If you are eager for more videos like this, whether it's about iOS or any other tutorials, make sure to subscribe to our channel. And if you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Let's dive right in. First select iOS app as the application type, then click on the next button. In the next section, it's time to choose a name for your project. For this example, I'll go with Face ID Test as the project's name. Remember to select Swift UI as the interface, Swift as the programming language, and set the storage option to none since we won't be storing anything. Additionally, if you're not planning to write tests for this project, simply uncheck the include test option. Select the destination folder where you want to save your project, then click on the create button. To start off, let's organize our project by creating groups and folders. Begin by creating a folder named app and then move the face ID test app into it. Now let's create two pages, one for the main page and another for the locked page. We will start by creating a new folder called view to house these pages. Next we will create two views. The first one will be the locked view and the second one will be the home view. Ok, let's start by designing a simple layout for the home view. We will set up a view stack with the text on the button, allowing the user to like the app by pressing the button. To manage the app views, we'll create a new class called App Manager. This class will handle switching between the views. Since we won't be subclassing this class, we will define it as a final class. We will create an enumeration of views to enhance code readability and organization. We will create a variable named current view of type app view to store the current view. We 
let's return to the main class and implement a new flow to facilitate switching between the views. Alright, in the home view, we'll add some code to allow the user to switch views and like the app. We'll start by adding App Manager as an environment object in the home view. After adding App Manager as an environment object, we'll include a line of code to change the current view when the user presses the button. Let's back to the lock view and implementing the lock flow structure. Firstly, we need to insert a new row into the info.plist. To add a new field to the info.plist file, you can simplify right click within the file and select add row to create a new row. You will need to locate a field called Privacy, Face ID, Usage, Description and select it. You will want to enter a descriptive text into the value field, which will be displayed to the user when they are using Face ID in your app. Let's return to the lock view and continue writing the code for it. We will start by importing the local authentication library to utilize Face ID functionality. We'll begin by setting up a simple design for the lock view, which will include a view stack containing a text and a button similar to the home view. We'll create a function to unlock the app directly within the locked view. While best practice typically involves handling this in a separate file like a view model or lock manager, we'll keep it simple and define the function here for now.
we'll use a function called can evaluate policy to ensure that the app can use face id this function helps to check if the device supports biometric authentication when calling the can evaluate policy function we we'll specify device owner authentication with biometric as the parameter to enable biometric authentication with the device face id or touch id we will add an ampersand before the error name to pass a reference to the NS error parameter as its type of NS error pointer. This allows us to capture any error that occurs during the evaluation process. We will adjust the declaration of the error variable from constants to a variable so that we can pass its reference correctly. We will replace the string in the info.pdx with the new one because I feel better with this one. Alright, it's time to call the evaluate policy function. This will initiate the face ID authentication process. If the success value is true, it indicates that the navigation was successful and we can navigate the user to the home view. We will need to define the app manager as an environment object within this structure to enable navigation to the home view. We will call the function to initiate the face ID authentication process when the user presses the button. In the final step, we will simplify update the app manager's current view to the home view completing the navigation process. Let's run the app and see how everything works. Let's select the appropriate iPhone simulator or your connected iPhone device and run the project to see the result. If you are using iPhone Simulator, don't forget to enroll Face ID. You can do this by navigating to the Features menu, selecting Face ID and then choosing Enroll from the sub-menu. You should press the like button to update the current view and like the app. To unlike the app in the like page, simply press the unlike button. Please press the allow button to enable the app to utilize the Face ID feature. To unlock the app, you need to match your face with the matching face button in the menu. As you can see, the app is now unlocked and this tutorial is complete. If you found the video helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel for more content and leave a comment if you have any questions. Your support is greatly appreciated.